some set up stuff about myself before I actually get to the meat of the story. I live in Oregon, specifically Yamhill County, a moderately sized, mostly rural county. I'm half Native American, half Caucasian, with my tribe being the Algonquin speaking people of the Anishinaabe. Unfortunately, as I live in Oregon, and the Anishinaabe are located around Minnesota, Michigan, Wisconsin, and Canada, and a pandemic going on right now, I haven't been able to visit my specific tribe as of yet. I'm over 18, though I don't want to disclose my own age for privacy reasons. I live with my mother, who is where I get my Caucasian from, and sister. Dad passed away about two and a half years ago. We have three dogs of varying size and four outdoor cats. In the part of Oregon I live in, you're never more than 10 minutes away from a forest, 20 from a mountaintop, and even in the cities, there's plenty of forestry. I live just outside of one of these towns, only a short, several minute drive, but far enough to where light pollution doesn't really heavily affect me and I can see the stars rather clearly. I have lived at this house since I was a kid, and though I've always gotten the creeps about this place since it's next to a giant house, it's been a while since anything I could categorize as paranormal happened to me. I'm a pretty skeptical and not so superstitious person. I think science could explain around 95% of the world's mysteries, though I've seen some stuff that I have no rational explanation, and the things that have happened to me over the past three days fall solidly into that. I know a decent bit about skinwalkers. They come from the Navajo tribe's legends, being witches that are the antithesis to medicine men, commonly found around the Four Corners area of the US on and around Navajo reservations. But my knowledge is limited to a different internet retellings of the legends. So I only know a few baseline rules. Don't fall for their imitation voices. If you smell dead, rotting meat, then you need to leave ASAP. Don't acknowledge its presence directly. Don't say its name out loud, unless you want to attract one. If you want to harm one, you'll need white ashes, like that from burnt wood. Burn sage if you suspect one being near you or hunting you. And if you happen to spot its true human identity, then you could say its name and accuse it of being a skinwalker to kill it. How much of that is true, I am unsure, for a number of reasons actually. The largest being that I don't think any of the videos I watched were made by natives who would have had more intimate knowledge of these creatures, but I could be talking at my rear end, for all I know. Some background for this property. According to the previous owners, who are part of a family who have lived here for generations, there was once a log cabin built here, on top of a native burial ground, which is also on a long inactive volcano. Sounds cliche, I know but it's absolutely true, near as I can tell. There has been a number of odd, unexplainable phenomenon, which I'll keep short to keep this thing going. The most notable include 12 foot metal doors belonging to a car and both being shook intensively by absolutely nothing. An old 50s metal gas oil can flying up from behind a ton of junk directly at one of my dad's friends. A running sound followed up by the mirror door in my parents' bedroom being shattered at three in the morning one night. The exact same time, my dad's best man died. Needless to say, that while I haven't encouraged any big feet or mothmen, I have seen some stranger things that have no logical explanation. The property I live on is around 10 acres in size. The house is decently large, with a one-car garage and office which is where my sister is currently chilling out at. Next to it, and a large metal garage, around 200 yards east from the house. The smaller garage and the house has motion lights all around the perimeters for proper illumination, just in case anything or anyone gets near the house. But the larger garage only had one bulb inside of it, and the main door, and this went out last week. And now at night, the entire area of the property is pitch black. The house is three doors, two on a porch and two to the front yard and driveway, 
one to the laundry room and into the backyard. One of the eastmost side is the living room, with nine windows and one of the doors, a kitchen area with a view onto the porch, another living room type area, and then a hallway to the bathrooms and bedrooms. The office in the smaller garage has two entrances, one heading directly into the backyard that's sliding glass, and two partially iron, partially glass doors that head into the garage itself. The metal garage was built over the aforementioned cabin and has an attic that spans over the entire length of it. It has a car lift, a paint booth that can fit a limousine, a bathroom, and a scaffolding with a heater, which is where the gas can flew from. Around 15 feet behind the shop is a large forest that I have never stepped foot into, due to there being a crazy old man living in it. While I haven't stepped into it, my sister and her friends have headed in it a few times, each returning with odd objects, though they haven't gone into the forest for several years. I remember them bringing out stuff like Baphomet statues, animal bones, and weird rocks. Aside from these, the only things we see out here animal-wise are does, baby deer, and things like that, just passing on through your yard to get into the forest. Now, for the current events. Around 4 a.m. on Saturday night, I was preparing to go to bed out in my family living room. My room is painted black, and being the summer here, it gets ridiculously hot at day, and I don't have a good AC at the moment, so I'm sleeping out in the living room currently. As I was about to sleep, I heard the cats fighting. Something not too odd. They're mostly males and get pretty riled up. But then I heard something else. Three distinct knocks on one of my front doors. This immediately freaked me out for a few reasons. One, it's 4 a.m. and pitch black outside. And these were knocks far too loud for an animal to make and sounded far too high for them either. Second, my motion tracker lights were still off. After the knocking, my dogs headed toward the other front door. This one is partially iron, partially glass like those on the office, and lost their minds when barking, something they only ever do when they see something they don't recognize. I locked all my windows, closed all the blinds, and just sat on my couch bed. In my living room, facing out towards the front yard, there is a half circle shaped window with no blinds that allows me to see when the motion trackers turn on or off. And I sat, staring at this window for about an hour and a half until they finally came on and the sun came up. I didn't have the courage to look as to what caused the lights to trigger, but from the stories I've heard of skinwalkers, I wasn't gonna take a single risk. The next morning, I asked my mom if she had heard a knocking on the door to get a disturbing answer from her and my sister. My mom had also heard the knocking, but also heard it in her window to the bedroom, and my sister heard it knocking on the sliding glass door to the office. I knew then that this was something that had knocked multiple times, as there's just no way I could have mistaken the tapping on my door for something tapping on my sister's door. While the sun was up, my sister and I bought some sage, since, from what I know, it wards off skinwalkers, but my mom misplaced it before we could burn it. By the time we realized we couldn't find it, the shop we went to had closed, so we had to just hope nothing worse would come that night. The second night was much more disturbing than the first. While I didn't spot anything, I heard a loud, ambient noise from the woods. The nearest broad comparison I can make is like how a city sounds dead at night when there's construction, but this sounded more natural in origin in some odd way. Another much more niche comparison would be the song Cave of the Past from Earthbound, as it's the only song I could think of that fits the ambience. I heard this ambience for around an hour, half an hour, when I walked my dogs in the front yard, and while I wanted to just stay inside and drown out my paranoia with some anime, my mom had me take out the dogs, claiming that there's nothing out there that can harm you, in spite of the fact that she had heard the knocking the night before. As I was walking with the last dog, I heard something from the forest to the east, chanting. 
I only heard about one short sentence in some dialect I couldn't discern. But that was all I needed to hear in order to head inside and lock everything up again. From there, I could hear the ambience even inside my house and was up again until the sun crested over the hills. One more thing about this night though. There was a light that refused to go out. It was one of the motion trackers in the car garage and each time I would look out at it, I would see nothing, but yet it stayed on all throughout the night. Finally, tonight, I woke up late as staying up late until sunrise tends to do so. So, I forgot to get sage before I headed to work. Once I came home from work, it was already dark out, as I get off by the time the sun is setting, around 2 in the morning. I was taking out my dogs for the last time. Tonight, there wasn't any ambience or chanting, and I stayed strictly to the small plot of the yard in front of my house. But as I was once again taking out the last dog, I heard a noise off to the east, and this scared the hell out of me. It sounded like something large had been knocked over or thrown down. Something that was loud enough for me to hear hundreds of yards away. Immediately, I turned towards the noise and tugged on my dog's leash to drag them inside, keeping them back to my illuminated sections of my yard, all while I went inside. I've locked my doors, my car, and all other things I can, and I've tried ignoring everything but I feel that I need to find help now. These events are slowly escalating, and I only fear that tomorrow could bring on a full-on encounter. I have been unable to sleep again thanks to this, and the fact that it's happened three nights in a row. Now, while I think it could be a skinwalker, I think it could also be a wendigo. They're similar, and while skinwalkers typically come from the Navajo, Wendigos come from the Algonquin-speaking tribes, of which is my tribe. If it was the latter, though, I have a hunch it would have made itself more known already, whereas with a skinwalker, me thinks it could be trying to lure me out to the darkness of the shop. I've been trying to get a hold of a medicine man here in Oregon, but all I can find on Google is old articles, almost as if it refuses to let me find the help I need so desperately. If anybody knows where I can find one to come and bless the house and the property, I would be elated to get this over with. These past few nights alone have been hellish, and I would rather not have to see what I've heard described many a times for myself. Thanks for reading, if you've made it this far, and any advice is welcome. I swear, this entire story is true, through and through, and I just want peace. Sorry if any of this doesn't make a ton of sense right now, it's past 4.30 here, and I'm still shooken up, so my brain isn't fully functioning at the moment.